state, head of government, uh, head of ruling party. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to write this book was because I saw it as a place where I could put some of my scholarship uh, and analysis and various uh, op-heads I produced in papers in one place. Uh, and in some ways, if you've seen my work and are familiar with what I've written, the book uh, traces some of my previous analysis, uh, more specifically my previous book uh, called The Rise of Turkey, the 21st Century's First Muslim Power. That was published four years ago in the US by University of Nebraska. In that book, I basically argued that Erdogan has done a tremendous job of transforming Turkey's economy in the last decade. Uh, people live better now, uh, economy is doing better, incomes are higher, infrastructure has improved. And I said uh, that having transformed Turkey's economy, Erdogan now needs to transform Turkey's political system. Uh, basically, Turkey's uh, perennial dilemma, how do you, um, you know, make this a comfortable country for, for the lack of a better word, it's two disparate halves composed of, again, for the lack of a better word, <coughs> seculars and religious people. Uh, I said, that's possible, it's very easy. Uh, the solution I suggested in the rise of Turkey, I said, he needs to have a constitution that guarantees freedom of religion for those who are pious, and freedom from religion for those who are secular. Within the same constitution, simultaneously, in public life and education, I said, that would relieve Turkey of its perennial secular religious tensions. I said, the same constitution could also, uh, should also ascribe broad liberties for all citizens, broad cultural and political rights, including for the Kurds. That would help Turkey uh, solve its uh, Kurdish problems, so Turkey would no more be fighting Kurds in the Middle East, as well as tension, suffering from tensions at home. And I said, relief from those tensions at home and uh, domestically, Turkey would then soar. And soaring, of course, Turkey would rise and become a, a regional power as Erdogan wants to make it. I don't think Erdogan read my book, uh, <laughs> which is why I wrote this book called The Crisis of Turkey. So now I want to tell you why I think Turkey is in a crisis. Uh, something that really alarms me. Um, I'm generally known to be an optimist on Turkish political issues, so it took me a while to come up to the conclusion to get this book in place. So, first of all, the crisis. A lot of it goes through understanding Erdogan. I did a lot of research in the book, uh, highlighting his uh, biography, writing about um, um, his upbringing, and I think understanding Erdogan uh, really goes through understanding his upbringing in what used to be a secularist society in Turkey, as well as his political uh, career in Turkey's political Islamist movement, where he broke his teeth in politics. He was born in 1954 to a poor and pious family, an immigrant family in Istanbul's Kasım Pasha neighborhood. That's the uh, old shipyards of the city. He grew up in a time when uh, Turkey was secularist, which meant uh, that religion was a, a, a purely a private matter. It was not supposed to be a public issue. There, was a, there wasn't supposed to be any religion in government or education. And people like Erdogan and his family felt, I write in the New Sultan, profoundly marginalized as they were pious and they did want to wear religion on their sleeve, but they couldn't do it. And I, th I, I, con I, I con continue to argue that his marginalization continued, for example, when he went to school. He studied at what is called the Imam Hatip School. This is a religious school in Turkey, publicly funded, of course, with taxpayers' money. Uh, although, despite the fact that he went to a public school, his school was given second class treatment in the education system. Uh, it was threatened to shut down many times when he was studying at it. He was told when he was graduating that upon graduation he would be qualified only to wash the body of the dead, a task that's traditionally reserved for the clergy in Islam. He had to switch schools his senior year of high school last year in order to qualify for entry into uh, a department where he studied uh, commerce and business. That goes through a lot. Uh, I think the new Sultan really gives you a sense of what he went through, but also it looks at the, the later years in life, when Erdogan comes to power in 2002, uh, using a, what I call a perfect storm of Turkish politics. It took a perfect storm to bring him to the power, because remember, he comes from political Islamist movement. Uh, that was considered a fringe political movement in Turkey until the 2000 uh, decade. Uh, politically Islamist parties that never received more than 20% of the vote. Uh, his success was that he came to power at a time when Turkey's centrist and center-right dominant parties were imploding. It went through, the country went through a massive economic crisis in 2001. Uh, political parties on the center and on the left that had ran Turkey for decades, ever since it became a multi-party democracy, were voted out as a result of this economic crisis, which was also linked to massive amounts of corruption. And as it happened in any society, when, uh, when the politicians mess up the economy, people want new voices, they want to try new parties. That was Erdogan's luck. 